Hello and welcome. If I have to say Nita in a very novel way, why don't you arrange that book properly? How would you say it in a better way? You would simply say it has, why don't you organize those books? How does this sound? Does it sound great? Yes, it does. So you guessed it correct. Today I'm going to help you with business vocabulary which would help you in your day-to-day -day life. I am Merlin Doria and I'm a spoken English trainer for BM Institute. So here are some vocabularies which will help you in your corporate world. So stay tuned till the end because I have some exciting offers for you. Right? So let's get started with a few examples versus regular English versus business English. Right? So where do you think this business vocabulary is going to help you? Right? So when you are in a meeting or during interviews, you will use business vocabulary and your boss will be really impressed. Let's move on to the next then. Where are you going to use it? While doing presentations, right? Business vocabulary will really help you. Next, where are you going to use it? The next one, on a conference call, right? So when you are in a call with your clients, that's when you use business vocabulary and your client will feel really good about you, right? So the next one I have for you is when you're drafting mails, right? And when you're on sending reports, that's when you'll use business vocabulary. So the next time when you will be drafting mails and sending reports, I'm sure that you're going to learn a few things and definitely implement that in your day-to-day -day career, right? So the next one I have for you is why when you're speaking with your colleagues in a corporate world, so that's where business vocabulary would help you. So here are some examples which will actually help you regular English versus business English. So let's get started. Now, I have got your mail. How would you say it in business English in a better way? You would simply say it has, I received your mail. Does it sound good? Yes, it does. Let's move on to the next then. The next one I have for you need, I need some help. How would you say it in business vocabulary? You would say it as, I require some assistance. That really sounds good, isn't it? Yes. Let's move on to the next step. The next one I have for you is, let's talk about it later. Now, if you have to say about this to your, to your colleagues, you would just simply say it. Let's discuss it later because I'm really busy now, right? So let's move on to the next step. The next one I have for you in my list is, he has told that he will come at 11 a.m. How would you say it in business vocabulary? You would say it as, he is scheduled to come at 11 a.m. So far so good? Are you learning business vocabulary? And I'm sure that you're going to use it. Let's move on to the next thing. The next one I have for you is, in my letter to Mr. Smith, how, when you're drafting a mail, how would you draft it beautifully using business vocabulary? You would simply say it as, in my written communication to Mr. Smith. How is it going? Are you really liking the business vocabulary? Yes. So let's move on to the next set. The next set I have for you is, on that day, I asked Ali, okay, tell me what your father does. He simply said it as, in a regular English, my father has a shop. But if he has to say it in a better way, like using the business vocabulary, how would he say it? He would say it has, my father is in retail business. Now that really sounds good, isn't it? So let's move on to the next one. The next one I have for you is, now your boss would say that, okay, tell me about your targets. So you'll say very proudly in your next meeting. You would just say it in a regular way, okay? I have achieved my target. But if you have to say it in a better way, like using the business vocabulary, how would you say it? You would simply say that, I have accomplished 
my target or we have accomplished our target. Does that sound good? Yes, it does. Let's move on to the next then. The next set of things I have for you is three people had come to inquire about our product. But if you have to say this to your boss in a better way, how would you say it? You would simply say it has, we have three potential customers. How does this sound? This really sounds great and it sounds like a bang, isn't it? So let's move on to the next one. The next one I have for you is the way he talks and convince is very good. But if you have to say it in a business, using business vocabulary, how would you say it? You would say it has, he has an excellent presentation and selling skills. Wow, that really sounds good, isn't it? Yes, let's move on to the next one. The next one I have for you is, she is meeting the dentist tomorrow. But if you have to say this in a better way, like using the business vocabulary, what do you think? Any guesses? What do you think it would be? You would simply say it as, she has a dentist appointment tomorrow. Wow, that really sounds great, isn't it? Now, the next one I have in my list is for you, is the next set of regular English versus Pigeon English. And for now, I know that you're going to jot this down and really start using in your next conference call when you're interacting with your clients or with your colleagues or when you're interacting with your boss. I'm sure you're definitely going to use it, isn't it? So let's get started with the next set. The next set I have for you versus regular and business English is that our boss will really say, why don't you get some more work? But if you have to, but he has to say it in a business English, what do you think he would say it? He would simply say it has, let's generate more business. Wow, this really sounds good, isn't it? Wow, let's move on to the next then. The next one I have in my list is now, you will come across something when you are actually planning something and you both say, okay, you have, and it's been a mundane idea, come up with something new. So how would you use it? You would simply say in a regular English, let's, uh, it's a new idea, use a new idea. But if you have to say it in a business English, how would you say it? You would simply say it has, let's implement new strategy right this sounds really good right so the next one i have for you in my list is now your boss has given you um has told you to arrange a party but he's given you a minimum budget right and you have to really start working on it in a really small expense so in a regular english you would simply say that to spend as little as possible but if you have to say it in a business English, what do you think it would be? You would simply say it has, let's minimize our expense. How does this sound? Yes, are you liking it? Are you learning more vocabularies, business vocabularies? Let's move on to the next thing. The next one I have for you is, now there is a learner and he is actually not talking more on that particular topic. So you would say in a regular way, means in a regular way, you would just simply say it as, let's talk more about this topic. But what I say when I am speaking to my one of my learner, I would just say, why don't you elaborate on this topic? And that really sounds good, right? Yes, so let's, these are the few things which I have got for you, and that is the next set. So we teach in BM, we teach business vocabulary and we take business um, training. So here are some students who are really very attentive and listening to the trainer and understanding what's going on, right? The next one I have for you is for all those managers now. The manager's job is really very tough because he has to balance the life between being a strict boss and being a friendly boss. Really? Right. So here are for all those managers 
to keep your employees on your toes, to get them encouraged and get them motivated. So the first word I have for you is awesome. Awesome really means fantastic. And that is fabulous. So that's when you use awesome, right? That's when encouragement, when you are developing some, uh, when you're saying that's fantastic job, that's when you say awesome. The next list I have for you is radical. What do you think radical would be? Now you'll think in your mind, ma'am, what is radical? So radical, it's now if you're on a conference call and you're actually, um, there is a brainstorming session going on. And one of the new uh, young executive really comes up with a brilliant idea, something which is out of the box. How would you say? You would simply say, wow, that was something out of the box. That's something radical. That's when you use radical, right? Yes. So that's the word power for radical. Let's move on to the next one. The next one I have for you is really very grand and magnificent. So that's stupendous. Now, one of your uh, co-worker really does really, really good job. And you have to say, and you have to appreciate and motivate him. You would simply say that you have done a stupendous job on this sales career. You are doing good, right? So the next one I have for you is ingenious. Now we will think ingenious. Ingenious is a word derived from genius itself, right? Now you are in a meeting and one of uh, your coworker comes up with a really clever thinking, you know, uh, something really very innovative. So that's when you will use ingenious. Ingenious means clever thinking, right? So the next one, the next power word I have for you in my list is path breaking. Now, path breaking doesn't mean that you're going to break the path or you're going to break some road. It is something which is your team has done, which is which no one has done in the market before. It is something unique. It's something different, something which is very fabulous and out of the box. He is something unique and he's done something fabulous job. That's when you use path breaking so how was this power words the power words was really had a lot of powers so i'm sure that all the all the managers will never go wrong when you're using these power words and keep your team together and always motivated and in their toes right let's move on to the next thing the next one i have for you is bravo Right? So bravo is something when you use in your day-to-day -day life. Like uh, bravo is used when you're using vocabulary, all right? Uh, and when you are, you might have heard this on poetry, during stories, bravo's you, uh, bravo is used when you are actually saying, wow, bravo, you have done a fantastic job, right? That's when you use bravo. So these are some power words which I have for you, which you could use it in your day-to-day -day life, right? The next one I have for you is corporate jargons. Now you might be thinking, ma'am, what is corporate jargons? So corporate jargon simply is a word that is express, is used to use express. These are the bosses. Uh, whenever the bosses say something, you really don't understand when you use jargons, it goes uh, above your head. You're really not understanding what he's really saying. So here are some day-to-day uh, -day use. These are some use which is commonly used. It's a mundane one, which you can use it in your day-to-day -day life, right? So the first one I have for you in my list is, are you on the same page? That means I'm really asking. Now, there is a discussion which is going on. And uh, one of the co-worker, okay, and he says, why don't we do it this way? Let's do it in this way. The boss is going to question them this way. He would say, are you on the same page? Are you agreeing to what I say, right? So that's an agreement, what we do, right? That's when you say, are you on the same page? Let's move on to the next then. The next one I have for you is ballpark figure. 
Now you would think, ma'am, what is ballpark figure? Ballpark figure is something which is an approximate figure. Like you have got a target. Your boss gives you a target and you have to achieve that in your career. So in that particular month, you have achieved somewhere around 70 to 80 percent. But you're not sure that what is approximate. So you give an approximate figure. That's when it said ballpark figure. That's when it's an approximate figure that has been given to you, given to your boss, right? So the next one I have for you is... Bandwidth. Now, bandwidth, what do you think bandwidth would be? Now, it is simply nothing, all right? It is something like your hands are full and you are actually not able to take some more work or more workload. So you would simply say it to your boss in this way. You would say it as, uh, oh, my, sir, my hands are full. I don't have a bandwidth to take more responsibility right now. Let's do it later. That's when you use bandwidth all right let's move on to the next then the next one i have for you is facetime now you would be thinking in your mind ma'am what is facetime it has nothing to do with the time and face you know so facetime simply means that your uh, one of your client would like to meet a ceo or some uh, in your hierarchy your manager right face to face that's when you use facetime right so these are the jargons which are which will help you in your career there are some more jargons for you which will help you now the next one in my list i have is piggyback so all these years you might have heard about piggyback but what is piggyback piggyback is something when your dad is actually carrying you on your shoulders and he's playing with you and taking you in your ride and your piggyback doesn't mean that Piggyback in corporate jargon, which you can use in like corporate vocabulary, it means that you overheard one of your co-workers' idea and it was really very good. And what you did, you stole that idea and presented it to your boss and your boss was really impressed. So you left without giving any credit to your friend and you took all the credit. So that's when you use piggyback. So never pay me back. It's a bad idea. All right. So the next one in my list I have for you is circle back. So you might be thinking in your mind, what is circle back? Now, circle back doesn't have to do anything in circle, but it is something to do. It's like, I'm very busy. Can you call me later? That's when you use circle back, right? So the next one in my list I have for you is seamless. Let me give you an example. There is a director and there is a heroine, okay? And he gives you, he asks you to do, uh, he asks her to give a shot. And she does that. And he, she does it in one. So we use seamless. So you'll say, wow, that was a seamless performance. So that's amazing. That's seamless. One must do is phone tag. It's something related to phone itself. Now, where, how to use it? When do you use it? And what does that mean? Okay, this corporate jargon will help you uh, for this situation that you are calling your client. Okay, and I'm not able to reach him, so the call goes on voicemail right then what does the client does the client tries to give you a call back and i'm not at my desk so he again uh, that call is being sent on voice back so this process goes on and on and on right but in the end in the evening they all get in touch and they say you know we were playing phone tag for you right from the morning <laughs> so that's when you use phone tag isn't it going so far so good so now these were corporate jargons. Now I have something for you for the list. The last one I have for you is business quiz. And I'm sure by all this time, you might have learned a lot of vocabulary. And I'm sure that you're going to use it in your day-to-day -day life. Isn't it? Yes. 
So the first question, let me see how intelligent my learners are, right? So let's start with the first one. What does it mean to generate more sale? So the options for you are sell more, identify more, or earn more. What would be the correct answer? Let's check. Till the, let's keep it till the end, right? The next one I have for you in my list is, before you can solve a problem, you need to dash it, what it is. The options for you are motivate, identify, and generate. What do you think the answer would be? <laughs> let's give you, let's give, let me give you the answer in the end, okay? Let's go on to the third question. Third one I have for you is, what can you not resolve? Is that a problem, an issue, or a business? Right? <laughs> let's move on to the next then. The next one I have for you is, if you dash one step at a time, you will make progress. What do you say? Any guesses? So the options for you are implement, resolve, or focus. So here are the answers for all your questions, right? The first one would be sell more. The second would be identify. The third would be a business. And the fourth answer is focus. And I'm sure all my learners have got the right answers. So this is all for you from, from Business Vocabulary. And I'm sure there are special discounts and offers of 2,500 discount on any course. Learn English online in the course institute. And the course offered a basic English course, advanced English speaking course, business English course, and IELTS course, and train the trainer course. OK, so these are the courses which we offer. OK, and you will get discount of 2,500. Don't you feel it's nice? Yes. Thank you so much. And you're being a, such a good audience. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye.